Welcome back guys, it's Rob with Tech. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create Unify controller uh, using the MongoDB 7.0.11. If you have an older CPU, you're going to have issues. Um, so one of the requirements is that it supports AVX, like uh, so for Mongo to work. Uh, that's one of the Mongo requirements. But if you're like me, I have my open media all virtualized. Uh, my CPU does support AVH, so stick around and I'll show you how to get the VM working with that. So first off, uh, we're going to go to my Open Media Vault. So I have, I already have set up, if uh, I go to Compose Settings, I have this data, Shared Folder App Data Setup. And the only reason that I'm showing you this is just in case that you're new to the channel. Um, this is where I'm going ahead and getting those paths where we install the Unified Controller and the MongoDB. So that's if you see this, it's coming from here. Now this app data, it's a shared folder. You would be seeing it on storage, shared folders. Here's where you add those. Uh, but if you have more questions regarding this, I do have another video where I show a new installation of Open Media Vault and installing Portainer. So that goes more in depth into this setup. So I'll proceed uh, with the container. So I'm going to go to Compose files and first of all we're gonna go into the container that i like to use if you go to docker hub and you search for unified network controller you're gonna find this one here i like to use this one because of the they provide the yaml file for us so it's as easy as just copying it over now there is a lot of a lot of ports that are open here i mean uh used or that that are are needed in case that you use that functionality so before you copy exactly what i'm doing on this video is like if you were to you can check those ports here on the bottom they want they tell you what they're used for in my install i don't use none of the advanced features or like the guest protocol or this mobile throughput so that's why i'm going to be removing those ports but here i just went ahead and copied this now i am going to put this on my github where you can just go ahead and copy it and most of the things would be the same as i did uh so i'm just going to go back to open media vault i'm going to go ahead and create a new container i'm going to call this unify con um i think this is the network controller i mean application just a description so you know what it is now i'm just going to go ahead and do paste what we copied from the other from this other screen over here right so uh one thing that you're going to need is the p u i d and the p g i d now to get this i already i'm going to save this we're going to come back to this i just want to show you where i'm getting the id from if you go to users on my here users and then i go to users I already have this app users that I created for to be used with this container or for all my Docker containers. So that's where I'm going to, because right now I'm going to do ID app user. So this is where that's coming from. So if you're going to do it the same as me, you would have to create this app user and add it into the users group. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and SSH into my open media vault. Um, I'm going to go into that IP address for your omb so here i'm just going to do id app user that's the user that i have so you can see that my uid is 1100 i mean i'm sorry 1001 and my gid is 100 if you are using the main account like i have another one robert was then they the uid changed based on which account you're using so i'm just going to use the app user so that's where i'm getting the uid and the gid so i'm going to go ahead and minimize this I'm going to go back into my unified controller and I'm going to go ahead and change this to 1001 and my PGID to 100. Now this is your time zone. Now this is the username that the application, which is this unify controller is going to use. So I'm just going to use leave unify as the user. This, this is the password that you want uh, the controller to use when connecting to the database. So this is, the database password essentially i'm just going to put very i mean uh, i guess something easy password just so like we can keep track of the values passwords 
Now this is the Mongol host. So whatever the container is named, this is it has to match the Mongol host. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it unify dash db and we're gonna name the the Mongol container the same. Now the other thing here, uh MongoDB. Uh, this is the database name. Like, what is the database name going to be called? What I'm going to do, I'm going to specify also dash DB. So that's my, my database name is going to be unified dash DB. I am going to comment this out because I don't want the memory startup, but I do like the limit so it can only get one gig. I'm not using TLS or this authenticate source. So now here on volumes, what you're going to do is where I was talking about the uh, using that path with the compose change to compose. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change this out and do um, port slash. So this is going to create a folder in here called Unify Network Application. And this path is just my app data folder. But it's using this as a system link so you can add it there without having to specify the whole srv path now here on this ports was like i mentioned if you're using other functionality like the the port and whatnot but then you would need this but in my install i don't need this so i'm just gonna comment it out also so here this image is using the latest tag so whenever there's updates, you can just go ahead and turn off the container and then click pull. And then that's going to download the latest image for Unify Network application. Okay, and now that's it for the Unify. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a space here. We're going to go ahead and create the MongoDB uh, container within the same YAML file. And the reason I'm doing that is because it simplifies the way that the when when Open Media Vault creates the containers. It creates a network for them, and they get added to the same network. Um, if you were to separate them, uh, where you have a container, you would have to specify your network manually. But I think that's going to be more complicated. Um, so that's where why that is. Now here I already have this ready, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy it over. So the only thing that we're doing here right is is going into docker io mongo and then we're tagging this as mongo 7.0.11 and this is required to tag it because if you were to update you were to put the latest tag it's gonna upgrade from like different versions you're gonna crash your database or uh and the reason is that mongodb doesn't support in place upgrade so that's why we need to tag it so this never changes now container name is important, like I had said, like this container name unified dash db matches what we have here for the uh, Mongo host. So that's where that and I also have this label as the same. Now here what this is going to do is just going to create a unified dash db folder in the app data. Now the other thing that is needed is this int in it dash mongo.js this is so you can initialize the character so this we're done with this already so we're just going to click save and we're going to go back if you check on on the mongo real, real quick i'll show you and it's like you do 7.0 because it's the the latest supported and the latest one right now is 7.0.11 but by the time you've seen this video and if there's a 7.0.12 you can go ahead and use that uh because the network uh, the unified controller supports that or at least that container that i'm using so to create you, you need to provide this right here the init dash mongo.js so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this and i'm going to copy into a notepad okay so i have it right here now this is important that you put the same data that that you put on the yaml file because what this is going to do is going to create the database and it's going to add the user and put the password uh so here the first value this is going to be if you follow the way that i did on the video it's going to be unify dash db i'm just going to go ahead and copy this 
And I'm going to put it here in the bottom because this is also like there, unify-db. Now user, because we know that we use unify. And then this one here is going to be also unify. I spelled that wrong, unify. Now password, this is a password. Uh, make sure you use something secure. This is just for demonstration purposes. I think I put passwords with the S. Now, also, again, you have to specify the database. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to add it over here. Okay, so this is how this is supposed to look like. Remember, the, um, if you follow my example, just make sure you change the password. Make sure you have more something more secure, and you also do that on the YAML file before you start anything. Because as soon as you start the YAML, it's going to read this, and it's going to create a database. This database, and it's going to add this user with this password. Um, if something goes wrong, you made a typo or something, you're going to have to delete, I mean, the the folders where you have the database. Uh, that, that's just how that is because this is an initial ISIN script that is used when you first start your container. I want to go ahead and copy this again because now this is the finished one. I'm going to minimize this. We're going to go back to your, your Open Media Vault and you need to navigate to where you have all your your app data right so if we go back into open media vault and you do unified network application and you see here in the bottom we need to copy it right here in the in this path right here so what we're going to do is we're going to go to storage we're going to go ahead and click shared folders and here in the app data i'm going to go ahead and click copy to clipboard now i'm going to go ahead and open this back and I'm going to do CD space and then right click and that's going to change me to that directory. Now, if I do an LS dash L, you see that right now we don't have anything for unify, but we do need to create the directory. So we're going to go ahead and do make MKDR. So make directory. We're going to call it unify dash DB. This needs to match whatever we specified as the path. Now I'm going to do CD and then navigate into that one. And then I'm going to make I need to make the file already, but before I make the file, I'm going to go back to uh, my notepad. I am going to copy this because this is what we need to put in the file. Now in here, there shouldn't be anything because you just created the folder. So we're going to do VI and then you can specify int it dash mongo.js. Now here you're going to right click. And this is supposed to look like this. I remember this is your database name and then your database name with the underscore stat. And then this is your user. And then this is the password. And this is what Mongo is going to use to create the database, add the user and password. And then this is the roles that are being added to your database. So, okay. So this is, looks good. So I'm just going to go escape and then colon WQ. And then if we do an LS again, we should see the file in there. Now I purposely left this, this is not going to start the way it is, but I purposely did it that way. So I can show you how to troubleshoot. Um, I mean, the instructions are correct. The only thing that is not going to work is because of the AVX instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and click up and it's going to download the image for the Unify network application, which is the controller, and it's going to download the MongoDB. All right, so it just finished and now you can look in uh, here. You have two containers, so it shows you two up statuses. So it's an up status and a down status. Now, if you go ahead and click up here on this one right here, you can see the 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 containers, right? So you got your unify dash DB and you can see that this one is status restarting. And the next one is the unify controller. This one is up. 13 seconds. So this was fine. So it, what happened here is that the, the controller for your MongoDB uh, didn't start. So how we can troubleshoot that, uh, what we can do is we go back into the command line and you can do limit. I'm going to do CD so I can remove all this path. 
what you can do is docker logs and then specify the name of your container in this case my in my instance we're using unified dash db and it's going to give you the logs and this is what i want to show you because if you're running this under a a the open media ball under a vm and you're emulating your cpu you're not going to get the avx instructions that is needed uh, you can see right here, MongoDB 5.0 plus requires a CPU with AVX support. Now, if you know, if you hypervised or you, this is your VM and you're using Proxmox like me, the way we're going to fix this is we need to modify the VM on Proxmox. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, minimize this. I'm going to stop this container. Now we're going to go ahead and shut down. Okay, so you're gonna go to your Proxmox and you're gonna find the the VM that you're using. So this is my VM. If we go to hardware, you're gonna see the sub processor. I have I'm using this emulated processor. Now if you go all the way down, and this is only gonna work if your CPU actually supports AVX. So I'm gonna go ahead and click host. I'll click OK. Uh, we'll just go ahead and start it right back. All right while that uh, loads okay so that loaded already so we're just going to go ahead and uh, sign back in you do services compose files and we should see our unify here so we're going to go ahead and give it another shot now we're going to go ahead and uh, do let me clear this and we're going to do the ssh root at and then the ip address for your open media vault and then we can do docker logs unify db okay so this looks a lot better now we can also do the same thing for the network apply application okay so this one's gonna say in the bottom i think it like says that it's done or okay there it is it, it gives you this done status now we go into a new tab and we go ahead and do the ip address of our open media vault which in my case is 10.0.0.40 then we do colon 8443 it's going to give us this bad request so th this is because it's not using HTTPS. So you go to the front of the URL, you do HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. And there you have it. Here's your controller. So now we have the controller running with 7.0.11 a MongoDB version uh, and using the latest tag for, for the controller. Now the latest one here is gonna be this 8.2.93. We're using the latest tag. Okay, now another thing, let's say something went wrong, you can access it, you'll see the error logs. Um, let's say everything, it messed up, right? You already did this and, and it, I don't know, something happened to installation, You the password was different or something. What you're going to do in those cases, like you, re you recognize that you put something wrong, the password, something in the init file, something went wrong and you can you identify that and you have to redo it. The way to clear it is you have to go into back into the system and remove the files and i'll show you from where this is the path i guess we can do if we go to storage remember and we check on the file system i mean not file system shared folders and we copy this app data we open the command line again and we're gonna go ahead and switch to this the where we have the app data um so now we're going to do an ls dash l and we're going to see that we now have a unified dash db and a unified network application so we're going to do rm dash r and then we're going to do unify network application this is going to delete the unify uh, network application folder so we do an ls dash l there's no longer going to be the container is no longer going to be there. Now, that's only if you messed, messed up, right? Because that's going to delete everything. Now, you're going to do CD. And you're going to CD into the unified uh, DB1. 
And the reason is that you can do an ls l you're going to see a data and then you're going to see the in it in it uh configuration file so you don't want to delete the configuration file and then having to redo it but you can you can do remove dash r and then do data now if you do ls l we only left that in it script now in here you can do the vi in and uh, correct anything that you're not correcting here or change the values that you have on the yaml but at this case or at least right now so that's pretty much it now in this case you go back into files and if you were to start the container again it, that's gonna recreate everything and that's how you can get back to square one in case you messed up and you can't get it to reload because the thing is like let me do an ls l you see how now it has the data again the the thing is with this container especially the like the mongodb it reads that init file and that only gets read once and that's only when it starts up so you only get one chance right to load it correctly and in case that you do something wrong something's uh, mistaken or something you need to go back uh delete the data so you can do a fresh start of the database and read the init file again so i'll that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Uh, if you like what you see, make sure you like a make make sure you leave a like, you subscribe, and thanks for all the support. I know we just broke a thousand subscribers, so thank you all for that. Uh, any more video ideas? Drop them down below. Thank you, guys.